Hey friends, happy Monday and welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. I hope that y'all had a great weekend and a great Easter if you celebrate. Um, some of you may not have seen my post that I wasn't going to be posting yesterday because of Easter and wanting to spend time with family and not stress about trying to get this video up in time for y'all because I had so much other stuff to do. And I'm trying to be better about like slowing down and like not trying to rush and be stressed out about YouTube because yes I make money from this and it's kind of like my little side job but there's no reason to stress myself out over getting videos out on time. I don't really have a set schedule. I like to get these out on Sunday for you guys but I know that y'all understand when it needs to be a day late or more. So no stress and now it is Monday morning and I am doing this voiceover for y'all and y'all are going to see this tonight. But we had mostly simple meals this week, things that we've had before, a couple new things. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the what's for dinner. Friday night we had barbecue pulled pork baked potatoes. I had made this pulled pork in the crock pot last week. If you saw last week's what's for dinner and so before I froze the rest of it I just went ahead and made some baked potatoes in the air fryer. We had the pork on top of the baked potatoes with a little bit of barbecue sauce and shredded cheese and it was delicious. I love to use leftover pulled pork in this way like this and barbecue pulled pork pizza are my two favorite ways to use leftover pulled pork. Saturday night we had fish and chips or just fish and french fries whatever you want to call it but I cooked both of these in the air fryer on about 400 for 15 minutes. These are the beer battered fish fillets that I picked up at Aldi like a week or two ago. And so I cooked those up and then I've got their seasoned fries. And then those of us that like salad had salad on the side. Sunday night we just had spaghetti, which is always a hit at my house. So just ground beef, marinara sauce, spaghetti noodles, Parmesan cheese, and then I made some garlic bread to go with it. Monday night we did try a new recipe, I guess you can call it. It's not necessarily a recipe. I just really got this idea of pizza sliders in my head. I didn't see anybody make it, but I've tried so many different slider recipes. I can't believe that I haven't tried to make this before. I think what I saw was somebody make some like little pizza roll-ups with like crescent rolls and I was like you know what sounds good some pizza sliders so I just have these brioche rolls from Aldi I cut them in half and then I'm putting on some marinara sauce and then I'm gonna layer on a bunch of pepperoni you could do whatever pizza toppings you like we just are doing pepperoni and then a bunch of mozzarella cheese and then I'm gonna put the top of these buns back on and then I've melted about two tablespoons of butter and to that I'm adding some garlic powder, Italian seasoning, and Parmesan cheese. Mixing that together really well and then I'm going to brush that over the tops of these sliders. And then I covered this with foil and put it in the oven on 350 for 30 minutes. And this is delicious. I can't believe I hadn't ever made it before. I've made like hot Italian ones which have like salami and pepperoni and like ham and then you can dip it in marinara sauce but I've the only other one that I think I've done with marinara sauce before is like a chicken parm slider, which those are really good too. I love sliders. They're easy and fun and you just serve it with a salad and it's a pretty quick and easy meal and you can make it with all different kinds of things. So that was dinner for Monday. Tuesday I made these salmon bites and yellow rice. I actually made this like a month or so ago and it was really good. I will have the original recipe that I'm basing this off of down below if you are interested in looking at that. But I'm just starting off by heating up about a tablespoon of olive oil and then I'm going to saute some peppers for a couple of minutes. These are just some mini sweet peppers because they're what I always have on hand but you could use bell peppers or whatever you like. And then once they start to get a little bit browned then I'm going to add in one package of yellow rice along with whatever seasoning is in there and just let that saute for a couple of minutes till it gets a little bit golden. And then I'm going to stir in some spinach and then this mix that I'm using is a spinach and arugula mix. You could just do spinach whatever you want. This is what I had. I kind of ripped it up so it was tinier pieces 
and I just stirred that around for like 30 seconds to a minute, let it start wilting, but it's gonna continue to cook with the rice. And then I'm adding in my water, which I am just using whatever amount of water it calls for on the back of your rice. It's going to vary depending on what brand of yellow rice you use just whatever water it says, and then one can of cream of chicken soup. Give that a good mix and then let that come to a boil. Once it came to a boil, I stirred it again, reduced the heat to a medium low and put a lid on this and let it cook according to the package directions for the rice. For me, that was 20 to 25 minutes. While that was cooking, I got working on my salmon. I took some salmon fillets and cut them into little bite-sized pieces. And then I am seasoning them with some salt, pepper, garlic powder, and blackened seasoning. Then I spritzed them with a little bit of olive oil cooking spray, tossed them around to make sure every piece was coated. And then I put these in the oven on 425 for 20 minutes. I will say last time I did these in the air fryer on 400 for 10 minutes and I like them much better in the air fryer, but honestly my air fryer basket was dirty and in the dishwasher currently being washed, so that's why I made them in the oven this time. After about 20 minutes, my rice was done. It stuck to the bottom a little bit, but it came off easily and nothing was like burned or anything. So I gave that all a good stir and then I threw my salmon bites on top and drizzled everything with a little bit of melted butter and then this was ready to serve. This is delicious. This is the second time I've made this, as I said, and it's just a great different way for me to make salmon. My family loves salmon, but I feel like I make the same like few recipes over and over again because I don't know what else to do. But this one has been a good addition to our salmon like recipes that I have. Wednesday night we tried another new recipe. This is another thing that's inspired by something that I saw on the Lemon 8 app. This is Crock-Pot Creamy Chicken Nachos. So to my Crock-Pot, I'm adding one can of drained and rinsed black beans, two cans of cream of chicken soup, one can of diced like Rotel tomatoes, and then I gave that a good stir and added in two chicken breasts. And then I'm going to season this. The original thing on Lemonade didn't really have you adding any seasoning, but I needed some seasoning, so I added some adobo seasoning in there, and then just some shredded cheddar cheese. And then I put a lid on this and let it cook on high for three hours. You could do low for like six to eight, but I was getting this started later in the day. So I did high for three, and then at the end of the cook time, I just went in and shredded up the chicken with two forks. And then we had this like nice creamy chicken mixture to put on top of some chips. We added on some lettuce, cilantro, pico, sour cream, more shredded cheese. Um, I think that was pretty much it. Salsa, Taco Bell sauce, that kind of thing. Whatever kind of toppings you usually wanna put on your nachos. And this was pretty good. I would honestly make this again. Um, usually when I do nachos, I do like ground beef or chicken and then I'll use like the Rico's nacho cheese. But as many of you know, I haven't been to Sam's Club in months. I haven't renewed my membership. Not sure if I'm going to. Kind of miss the Rico's nacho cheese. So, but Elijah asked for nachos and so I saw this and I was like, yeah, we'll give that a try. Don't really need any like liquid cheese. You got that creamy, cheesy chicken mixture and it was honestly pretty good. And finally, the last meal of the week is chicken scampi and rice. I have made this before, but it's been quite a while. So I'm starting off by heating up some olive oil in my skillet. And then once that's hot, I'm adding in my chicken tenders. These have just been seasoned with some onion salt, garlic powder, and pepper. And I'm just going to cook them for a couple minutes per side, like about three minutes, just to get a nice sear on the side and then do the same thing on the other side. They do not have to be all the way cooked through. This is something that I changed from the original recipe. I decided not to cook them all the way through and then end up cooking them the rest of the way with the rice as you'll see later. But once these are seared on both sides, then I'm just going to remove them from the pan and then I'm going to make a little pan sauce. I'm going to add in some melted butter, some minced garlic and some red pepper flakes and and a little bit of salt and then let this cook for about three minutes. You don't wanna burn the garlic, so make sure you just stir this constantly and cook for about three minutes. 
Then I added in some chicken broth with a little bit of lemon juice. The original recipe wants you to add in white wine, but that's not something that I typically have on hand. So it says you could sub in a little bit of chicken broth mixed with some lemon juice and just keep stirring that in over a medium high temperature to emulsify the wine into the butter. And then you're just wanna, gonna wanna continue to cook and stir for approximately five minutes until this mixture has kind of reduced. And then you're going to want to set aside two tablespoons of that pan sauce to drizzle over the top of this later. Then I'm adding in my rice and I'm gonna mix that into that pan sauce that's left in the pan and then just kind of saute this for like three to four minutes until the rice gets a little bit golden. Then I'm going to go in with some chicken broth and give that a good stir and then I'm going to bring this to a boil. Once this comes to a boil, I'm going to add my chicken tenders back on top of this rice. This is something that I changed about the recipe. Original recipe will be linked down below for all the exact measurements, but just so you know, this part is what I changed. I'm adding the chicken back in so I can continue cooking with the rice. I turn the heat down to a medium low and cover this and continue to cook it for about 20 minutes. And then I checked the internal temperature of my rice to make sure it was fully cooked. My rice was all the way done. So then I just sprinkled this with some freshly grated Parmesan cheese, drizzled on that remaining pan sauce, and then topped this with some fresh chopped parsley. And then I put a lid on this for about five minutes just to get that cheese nice and melted. And that was it. You could definitely serve this with some sort of vegetable on the side a salad, whatever you want, but it was towards the end of the week and I was not feeling like doing any other work. So this is all we had for dinner this night and it was delicious. And that is going to be it for this week's What's For Dinner. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave me a thumbs up. And if you made it here all the way to the end, make sure you leave me a smiley face emoji down in the comments. And if you plan on making any of these recipes, let me know which ones you plan on trying in the comments down below as well. I hope you all have a great week. I will be back tomorrow with the grocery haul and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.